our good friend, Mr. Mark Batson, had posted a video today, Saturday, uh, about tools. And he put out a community challenge for us to respond. What are the tools that we most often use in every build? Aside from the big green mat, <laughs> this is this is a tool, just like how a wheel is a simple machine. So uh, that's the science portion of today's show. But uh, something that I... I do have a lot of stuff that I use, okay, uh, in every build. Um, but there are a couple things that I use that are kind of cool that I don't get to use on every single build. And we'll show you a couple of those things here. First of all is these uh, these draftsman circles. You can get these at, at any old Hobby Lobby or any type of art store. Uh, these are great for masking wheel surrounds, like if you want to just do the center of a wheel and have the, uh, leave the uh, the chrome ring or lip or something like that. Several different sizes here. You can see we've already been using one on that one. Uh, but Mrs. BG is a prolific knitter. You guys probably all know that. You've probably even seen her knitting at <laughs> shows. But uh, going into yarn shops with her all over the country... We discovered this little uh, jewel. This is just a couple of bucks, and you can see we've been using this a lot. We've the 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 sizes on here are awesome. This is made out of a, a thin piece of tin. You can hear that, so it doesn't flex. It will flex very easily, but not as easily as these these guys here. So this is great, and you can see we have used this several times already, and we've been using this on our armor builds. So a lot of the road wheels for, for tracked vehicles fit in these categories here. So that's awesome. We, we love doing this, and because it's metal, I don't care about the measurements and all that stuff. I don't, that doesn't really bother me. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to be like, oh, yeah, I'm using such and such size needle today. You know, I don't, this doesn't bother me at all. This square here is like, a nice idea <laughs> it's just a good place to hold it but um, I mean I can go back and clean the paint off of this and not worry about damaging the actual plastic that this stuff's made out of and I don't really care about the uh, the measurements and stuff on here anyway because we don't really need those we just want those holes so this is my portable hole yes this is my portable hole all right so there's that and then uh, Mr. Batson was talking about uh, his Mod Podge that he likes to use for clear parts well I also like to use uh canopy glue and i've talked about this in the past and, and have answered several questions about what we use for uh, tacking down clear parts and such i used to use i, I use this uh formula 560 zap canopy uh, by zap a uh, canopy glue and i got turned on to this by mr chris cortell himself watching i was asking watching a video something like that asked a question about something and he he gave me an amazon link for it so i i have been buying this off of amazon i think this is like my second bottle of this stuff in, over the years but not only do we use it for uh gluing down windows but we do this for all of our pre-build mock-up stuff and um i mean we're down to let's see here it's really hard to tell where we're at but it's cut kind of, we're about down to there now so we've had this um for let's see last august and here it is almost halfway through march oh actually more, more like almost april so uh yeah i bought this one back in august last year so this is this is doing really really well and again it's one of those situations where it it tacks up really easily uh sometimes i'll even put this into a, like a little bottle cap and then just let it set up so it gets kind of tacky sort of gummy and then i'll use that to tack pieces together uh sometimes i'll just actually uh put this on here like there's a little bit of a build up right here and then just use a toothpick to apply it. and this is <laughs> my chrome pen test but um yeah this canopy 560 glue works awesome it's replaced my mod podge i've been using mod podge for a while too so much so that the, the 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 label on it got destroyed and i was using the matte stuff so that i wanted to remember i couldn't remember you know so i'm a hard time remembering because the label's messed up so i put a picture on there of matte so i can remember that this was the dull stuff and then uh take that as you will and then one other really awesome tool that i've used in the past that i've, I've probably shown is these razor saws okay these things are sharp they are like Batson sharp. These are as sharp as Mark Batson. So these guys are great for opening trunks, uh, doing precision cuts on stuff. They are photo like as thick as photo etch. So they are very, very thin. You can bend them super easy. 
for instance. <laughs> that guy looks like uh, Gonzo Schnoz right there. But uh, this, this, these guys are awesome. And if you cut yourself with this, you won't know it until you go reach into the pickle jar. Uh, yeah, it's like getting paper cuts. But um, these are awesome. The, the kerf on this is so, so thin that you're not removing that much material. But you do have to go very, very slowly when you're sawing with these so you don't heat up the plastic and melt it or um, bend it because it'll jam up sometimes, you know, and you don't want to just put a big old type of thing while you're doing a, a cut. So great, great, great tool for cutting open trunk lids and doors. Uh, I've done this um, more than once now, so I'm a qualified expert, right? And then the kit that I happen to have, I got from a guy named Rhino, Rhino Hobbies, Mr. Mike. He's pretty cool. He always has these on hand. And um, the this this is actually a base piece that uh, these guys here with the holes in them will click into. So you, it'll have a standard height that you can actually change by taking off these little stacks here. So if you want to like cut a tire in half, you just you just put the saw blade in place if we can demonstrate here quickly there we go it's keyed there's a side a and a side b so you see how that fits in there you can take these the stack off of here so you can change the the height there i think they're about uh, about a millimeter thick each and then you could cut something you could just it's just a really cool idea so that's really slick it's a very handy little tool I've always liked using these things. And then uh, I do have a punch set. I'm going to go out and get that right now. So here we go. We have the punch set and the little tool. Oh, this is a hammer I went and got at Harbor Freight. It's got, um, I think it's a Delron, a Delron tip on one side and a brass tip on the other. It's perfect for this type of application because this is the thing we got from Micromark. And yes, it is very expensive. This was a gift I was I had received many years ago from somebody that's no longer with us. But it's got all these different pieces of, of doweling, steel doweling. Uh, it's got the, uh, the, the corresponding holes. These are what I use to punch out the decals uh, for um, that we get from uh, Best Model Car Parts. Uh, if we do in round gauges, we'll use this guy here. We'll use this end of the hammer so that we don't destroy the uh, the actual doweling itself. And uh, just a couple little tippy taps, and then the next thing you know, we have a gauge. And I say decal, but they're not technically decals since they're actually printed on photo paper. It's a whole thing. Uh, so, tools that I use on nearly every build. Okay, so first of all, the Squadron Scraper. This is a seam scraper. This is great for anything that, like a like a, a gun barrel, uh, roll um, roll cage tubing, something like that. Anything that's a cylinder that has a seam down the side of it. In all cylinders, we're going to have seams. So uh, this is really cool because it's got like a right-handed and like a left-handed style. This this opposite on each end, opposite to each other. So uh, if you need to go along this side or if you need to rotate it around and go around the other side of something, you know, just in case, you know, if you're holding it, depending on how you're holding it and stuff. Um, so that is a really handy little tool. We got this when we were on vacation, happened to pop into a hobby shop up in Montana. Pick that up there. Another tool that I use on every single build, and this one has a history because this was actually my dad's. I remember robbing this out of his model building uh, tool collection, but this is a triangular file, jeweler's file. Can we get in there really good? Yeah, so this guy is awesome for if you got to do a little bit of filing underneath the overhang of something, get down inside there. You can get there really, really well. It, the, all sides are perfectly flat, so it doesn't matter what side you use. You're going to, you, you can just grab it and go. And uh, because of the shape of this, it doesn't flex like sometimes the flat files are well so uh, I just really and then the point on this thing I don't know how many exhaust tubing tubes I have uh, opened up with this with this guy here because it just hogs it out really really nicely and since they're symmetrical um, it, it, you're gonna get uh, a nice clean round hole rather than something that's um, a little bit <laughs> the football shape and then uh, speaking of files, this newest one, I'll have a link down below to the Amaz to Amazon for this guy because this is something Mrs. BG got for us for our birthday. And this is a Tamiya file. Oh, it's a Tamiya file. Oh, but, but, yeah. no, stick with me here. Stick with me because this guy 
is amazing. The way this is designed, it almost polishes the plastic as you file. So a lot of files will have a, um, a cutting surface on both sides. This one only has a cutting surface on one side. And the instructions for this actually say to only use this on styrene plastic. Don't use this on anything else. Don't use it on wood, metal, whatever. Glass, <laughs> diamonds, you know, whatever. So dragging my thumb, forefinger along here, it just feels smooth. But if I try to push back on there, it, you, you, feel the, you feel the cutting surface. So this almost polishes as you're using it. So that is really cool. Um, after after finding out about this guy here, and it does come in different widths. Um, I'm not sure what width this one is here. I think this is uh, six millimeter, maybe three millimeter. I'm not sure. I'm not good on my millimeters. It doesn't say on here, but it says it does say it right there. Four plastic. Yes. And of course the Timio logo. But yeah, this, um, I recommend, oh, it's got this nice little handy, you know, can use it all day long and not hurt your, you know, not hurt your hand. But uh, yeah, this guy is just awesome. Love this thing, and it has really upped my game. I've had to do a lot less sanding afterwards when 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 using that guy there. And then of course, uh, depending on what application we need, these guys sanding sticks. I picked these up all over the place. We can get them at uh, beauty supply stores. You can get them at hobby shops. We got some from Andy's hobby uh, headquarters. But I tell you what, guys, um, as much as I love Andy and his store, uh, because of the stuff printed on here, it does take away the usefulness of this area, the surface area here. So I'm just saying that out loud that that, that can actually be, especially if you're using the fine stuff like the 600 grit. If you're using like the 180, where are you, 180? It's going to be the last one I pick up, of course. There it is. If you're using the 180, it don't matter. It, you know, the, the grit comes through. But if you're using one of the very, very fine things, like the 400, 600, 800, uh, yeah, that's like trying, trying to uh, file or sand with a piece of paper. So there's that. And then uh, this, I love these. I love these combo ones where you get the coarse, the semi-coarse, and then the actual polishing surface. And this has had a long life already in our bench. And then uh, one last thing that I'm going to mention that we always, always use on builds are these little dudes, these micro brushes. Um, yeah, I just recently had to restock. I get like, we, we ordered like 400 at a time, and I think they last me about a year. Uh, but these are great for uh, just doing a little bit of detail painting around something, maybe having to do a touch-up or just have to go in and boop. You know, that's how that, that's what that sounds like. Do a little bit of detail painting, and there you go. So that's that. All right, so those are the basically the things that I use in every single build, aside from hobby knife. I don't have a, a famous one like Mr. Batson does, but I do have two. Hey, how's it going? I'm doing okay. How are you doing? So this guy is the standard number 11. Uh, this I think this is a te yeah, it's an old tester's handle. These are priceless. <laughs> I haven't had to worry about a knife rolling off a desk in uh, decades having this piece on here. I tell you what. But um, yeah, the number 11, the good old standby number 11 uh that's a great knife to have but then this here's a here's a timio one i got a little fancy with my knives but this guy this has a completely different bevel to it different angle and it is a thicker blade too uh and this guy is a little bit more by workhorse so um this has a lot less chance of breaking off a tip because of the way it's angled uh, unlike the number 11s. So I use, you know, the, these each have their own specific applications when using them. And to me, <laughs> see, this looks like it's kind of a, a, like, what the hell's going on here, Mr. Tamiya? But no, this is actually there, keeps it from rolling off. It's got a kickstand, basically, keeps it from rolling off your desk. So, so there you go. All right, guys, say thank you to Mr. Batson for the awesome question for the community. I hope you guys follow along and join in with your, with your, uh, bench necessities. And uh, we'll talk to you all a little bit later on. Have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you later. Bye now.